Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Focus on Liberia. This is a special, special Thursday edition of Focus on Liberia. And what we are about to talk about is money. Show me the mula. I have in a studio, Mr. Alex Coffey. He's the uh, former head of the Financial Intelligence Unit of Liberia, FIU. Mr. Alex Coffey is here to talk money. Well, we say there is, uh, we hear all on the news that there's a shortage of money in the banks in Liberia. Why is this happening? And how can this problem be resolved? Who can answer that question best than someone who has been involved in the Liberian economy? Mr. Alice Coffey is, head, is a former head of the Liberian Financial Intelligence Unit. He's currently a senior business consultant at Ellen Bernan International that is based in Minnesota. Mr. Coffey, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you, thank you, Dennis. Uh, and thank you to, hello to everybody in Radio Land uh, who's listening, uh, maybe cyberspace who's listening. And um, thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, there's a lot of talk of money shortage or liquidity issue. We're gonna get into that and I uh, decided to uh, talk to you about this. So has to, uh, First, explain what this means, what is causing it, and how this can be resolved. Because money is everything. If there is no money, why me? What can you do? So, I want to welcome all our viewers from across the globe. This is focused on Liberia, and we are broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia. As I said previously, Mr. Coffey headed the Financial Intelligence Unit in Liberia. That is an equivalent of uh, the FBI of money. People that make sure <laughs> that uh, nobody is stealing money, nobody is doing money laundering, supporting terrorism, all the underground money issues. They investigate and report it. We're gonna be talking about that a little bit. So this man knows a thing about two, a thing or two about money. Right now we say there is money shortage in the banks. Mr. Coffey, let's begin that way. Let's talk a little bit about what you did. Financial Intelligence Unit. That's supposed to be relatively new. What we refer to as normal day in Liberia, I don't think we have that. What is this all about, FIU? No, the, the, first of all, um, thank you for that question. Uh, currently, um, I am the Senior Business Development Consultant at Allen Bernard International. Allen Bernard is a management consulting firm that provides business support services tax services, uh, both to individual, corporates, and international taxation. We also provide training services uh, in various uh, topics. Uh, we bring on different partners uh, to deliver our training services. Uh, most of these services are within the United States of America. We also provide training services uh, internationally. But our biggest brand is the anti-money laundering services, which we provide to um, financial institutions in the United States of America and outside of the United States. We also do work with the international financial organizations, IMF, World Bank, and then country-specific. Um, so we also work with countries to consult with them to develop their anti-money laundering processes and things like that. So FIU. Um, yeah, no, before we get to the FIU, because what you just mentioned is interesting because uh, it looks like you, wherever, you know, money, financial management consulting, you know, business support, tax training, and anti money laundering services. Yes. So I, I like the anti money laundering services. Talk to me a little bit about that. How do you do that? So, for instance, we, we had worked with a, one of the biggest. Um, um, banks in the United States of America. Uh, for privacy reasons, we won't call names. Uh, so we basically we did uh, things that had to do with uh, money transfer, um, international financial intelligence that border on uh, sanctions and things like that. Banks, uh, financial institutions try to avoid yes, stringent uh, regulations in the United States laws. They are enforced, and uh, bureau regulators are imposed. You've heard about huge fines being enforced on financial institutions in the tune of millions. 
So these banks continue to revise their, assess their risk. Uh, so one of the things we did uh, for another financial institution is to put their, do a risk assessment for them and put their risk model together. Um, on the other hand, we also look at international money transfer to see where the bank, the financial institution will be vulnerable and advise the financial institution mm -hmm. um, to ensure that uh, they, 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 do, they do not fall in the trap or they do the right thing according to the law. Now, the equivalent of the financial intelligence unit uh, of Liberia is what we call FinCEN in the United States of America. Okay. Uh, financial uh, Crimes Network is called a FinCEN. So it works uh, within the Department of Treasury. So the interrelationship with the uh, with uh, the Federal Reserve as well. So uh, regulators uh, work with these people to ensure that the financial system is sound. Mm. So in Liberia, this this is what you did, and we're going to come back to to that later on as we talk about the shortage of money in the banks. So anytime we talk about the shortage of money in the bank, the way you guys refer to it is a liquidity issue. What does that mean, and why is money called liquid? <laughs> you can. <laughs> in my, in my, um, I know. Um, let me reference. Uh, other people came on and and talk about the economy and all that. Um, for me, I'm talking about the money, but I like to make it simple for people to understand. Having been uh, being a trainer and having been an instructor for a number of years. I, I like to make it simple for the ordinary person to understand. So when you talk about liquidity, it's money, and why is it called liquidity? Because uh, if you look at, um, it's the most liquid in terms of the assets. Mm -hmm. It's cash. It's ready money to buy yeah. goods and services, to pay for goods and services. You whether it's in your hands, whether it's in the bank, it's ready money. That's why the money in the bank is called demand. Demand deposits because you can call on your money at any moment once sure. the bank is open. Yeah. So when you know when that money is shut, then we call it liquidity issue. The sure. bank is liquid. That means the bank has the required amount of uh, money it's supposed to have. Okay. Great. The bank is not liquid, meaning that's why when they say people filing for you know liquidation or other stuff, it means putting money there. Yeah. Yeah, as simple as that. Okay. So yeah. when you have more cash, you liquid. Yeah, you can say you liquid because you have <laughs> some good money. Yeah. All right. So good. That, guy, that guy is solid. That guy, that person is solid. That person is very liquid, meaning yeah, you have some cash. Yeah, uh, monetary issue asset. meaning money shortage. So now, mm -hmm. and as you said previously, later or earlier this week, I had our uh, economist Sam Jackson, and he was mm -hmm. talking from the uh, economic standpoint, and he broke this thing down. But I'm I, I'm I'm greedy. I want more. So <laughs> we invited you to talk from the uh, accounting, finance side, even break it down further. So uh, let's start basically, right? So when we mm -hmm. say there's a liquidity issue in the bank, shortage of money in the bank, why should there be money in the bank? What what is the importance? As long as money in the country should be okay, right? Why should it be in the bank? Well, money in the bank um, is. Money in finance, the banking system is the in, what we call intermediary, right? So the bank is the sort of the middleman, right? It's like the football, the number six is the person that distributes the ball, all right? Mm -hmm. Get the ball, drivers, and pass. So in any economy, in any financial system, the bank is the intermediary. Is the bank that allow economic activities to happen, financial activities to happen. So the bank is important to be there. For example, if you want to transfer money to another place, yeah. you have to do it through the bank. Correct. You can't take money and say you put it on, you know, you just send the money, but you have to do it what we call the paper transfer. You got to do it yeah. through the banking system. So somebody has a bank account on the other side. In Guinea, in Guinea Bank, and you want to send money, so you go to a bank in Liberia and you send that money, and that they receive it, they give that person that money. The money doesn't change hand right away, but it's the paper transfer, so it allows you to be able to do your transaction like that. So as simple as that. 
But in economic terms, it's a whole different you know, big mm -hmm. explanation, which for me, I just want to keep it simple for the Right. So right. if there's no money in the bank, like the what we see in Liberia happening, we're going to get to you know why it's happening. But if there's no money in the bank, or if there's shortage of money in the bank, what are some of the issues that happen? Okay, so um, no money in the bank, meaning the bank is shut on the amount of money it's supposed to have, right? Because when you put your money in a particular bank, everybody that put their money in the bank, that money is for those people who put it in the bank. So it's sort of, the bank is a liability. That means the bank owes these people their money, all right? So the bank is supposed to have that amount of money. Then there is a central bank that also regulate those activities to uh, the banks and make sure that the banks have the amount of money that it owes to its customer. So it introduces something they call a reserve requirement. So meaning that if you, you are allowed to have this amount of money in the bank, but anytime it crosses a certain amount by way of percentage that is being set by the central bank, then that money has to go to the central bank for the central bank to hold it. So it provides a security in a way that if the bank's money goes down, the central bank can give them some money back so that it can be able to give that money back to the customers that put their money in the bank. Great. Okay. So let's go back to how this whole money business gets started. Mm -hmm. How does money come into Liberia and how does money leave? So generally, um, money, whether it is uh, Liberian dollars or it is foreign currency in this in this uh, issue, we deal with the U.S. dollar because it's the U.S. dollars that we deal with a lot in Liberia. There are other currencies that go in Liberia. There's the euro and the, the pound sterling and those currencies go on the CIFA and NARA, all those money you know, have, you know, exchange in Liberia. But the major currency in Liberia is the Liberian dollar and the US dollar. So those money come in two ways or they go out in two ways. They come in and go out in two ways. That is two transfer. That is on the paper now. So that transfer is mostly done through the bank. And also money, physical movement of money through the various uh, points of entry. So for example, or uh, exit, you got uh, land. So people can travel with money and pass through the border, the land border and move with money in cars or whatever. People can also bring money in or uh, take money to the airport in the plane. People can also bring money or take money to the seaport, to the ship, to the containers or what have you. For example, if central bank is ordering money, is bringing money into the country, they will bring it to in containers in the ship. If seafarers are bringing money to pay their staff, they will bring the money in the ship. Of course, there are different laws and regulations that cover that. So that is how money go uh, comes and leave the country to transfer and through physical movement of mm. money, physical money. And, and through transfer, uh, meaning I'm in Liberia and I want to send money to my uh, friend or brother in the United States who can go through the bank and transfer it and the money leaves. Yeah, so if you, if you want to bring money in and out of the country through transfer, that is, is paper, that, that means through what we call to the bank, what we call wire transfer, for example. Yeah. So that's paper. You go to the bank, but you have to carry money, or in this case, you have to have a bank account. Okay, there's a regulation that covers that. Before you send money, you have to have a bank account. So you that money is leaving. So you fill out a form with this uh, computer business and the online business, they're yeah. also mm -hmm. online. But let's make it simple. So you could you could go to the bank and say, I want to transfer um, $500 here to my account. So you do a wire transfer, you transfer the money. The same way another person is in another country can do the same thing. So, but there are different laws that cover that money transfer. So also 
Money is transferred by what we call the money and value transfer services providers. These monies and values are uh, what we call the Western Union, the MoneyGram, the RIA, mm -hmm. and those people that allow you to send um, some amount of money to your, your, your family and friends or to mm -hmm. okay. Now, there are different, like I said, there are different regulations. For yeah. example, Central Bank has what we call a regulation on wire transfer, but that, that regulation is old and it's weak. Right. Um, when I was there, we spoke about it a lot that we needed to revise it. Um, then there's, uh, the FIU also have regulation on what we call the co uh, currency transaction reporting as well as suspicious transaction reporting. The currency transaction reporting is more of, it's like anytime you, you do currency activities, whether through transfer or, or through this post of money over a certain uh, amount, what we call the, the certain uh, threshold, mm -hmm. there's a report that goes to the FIU. Then there's a suspicious transaction where if you were found by the financial institution to be, uh, there's some red flags. So right, if there right. are any red flags, the bank know its customer very well, so they will do their own inside investigation. And if the state believe that this person is acting suspicious, then they send that report to the FIU, then the FIU mm -hmm. will you know, from right. there. Okay, so there is another one they call, what they call Hawala, H-A-W-A-L-A. -A. The, the, the Hawala is the informal one, hmm. all right? And that one is prone to money laundering, terrorist financing, and, and because there, there's not regulation covering that. Hawala is something like, for example, you know, the old papers sit down in some corner in, uh, in, in, in Greenville. Right. right. Then you go there, you say, Oh, Papi, please send my money to uh, Lofa, for example, or send it to Ivory Coast, for example. And he takes the money, he uses his phone, he takes something to his other man, Hawala man on the other side, and he sends that, he sends a text, and he gave you a number to send to your person on in, in Ivory Coast. So your person, in, your relative in Ivory Coast, will go to that other Papi in Ivory Coast with that code. It's something like what we we have in the uh, um, 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 these um, um, what uh, they were talking about the the um, the uh, mobile money services almost like the mobile money services, but the mobile money services is more it, it's formal. Yeah, okay. so this one operates behind the scenes operates, yeah. so it can be pulled to all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So, so to what extent the movement of money? How how much of it that goes through the export and import business? Because we buy from outside, we send money there. Someone buying from us in Liberia, they bring in money. How how does that move? That's the biggest. Okay. That's the biggest way money move. Okay, through uh, um, um, business. All right, and there's all kinds of you know things on it like transfer transfer pricing. Right. Then, most of, in fact, most of the money laundering, a, a, a huge percent of the money laundering goes through um, the business you know, and transfer pricing and so on. For example, the guy sits in Liberia, all right? He wants to transfer $5 million, saying that, purporting that he's um, bringing goods in a country. But his real motive is he wants to get his money out of Liberia. So he goes to the bank, he completes the wire transfer paperwork, and he transfers his money. Now, is he bringing the amount of goods that he say he's drinking? Not necessarily, okay? So there are other things that goes along with ensuring that that guy brings it with something that, uh, things like letter of credit and those things that are texting, making sure that he fill up the input, input declaration form and ensuring that when he comes back, that it will be tracked and show that he brings that amount of goods. But that too is a challenge. So yeah. um, when this whole capital flight thing about like real money leaving the country, capital flight meaning one side, financial flow meaning money coming both ways. So, but capital flight meaning the money just leaving our country, just leaving Liberia, just leaving Liberia. 
So there are different ways. Those are the huge ways that uh, they can they can they can send those money out of Liberia. And most yeah, of it, that world capital flight. Uh, on online that world capital flight, and I will come back to it. But is okay. there a, is there is it possible that has the money leaves Liberia? It comes to a point that the money dry out because plenty of money have left Liberia. They come back. Is that a possibility? There's a possibility, um, but you know the transfer regime at that point, bank transfer doesn't call for movement of money. So if I say I transfer five million dollars right. to Japan from Liberia, I transfer it to my account or to my business partner or to a supplier, money has not changed hands yet. So the money is stay in the country, mm. okay? Even if I want to send my profit or my, my investment money into the country through the wire transfer, the money has not left the country. So the money is stay in the country available for circulation because what has happened with the transfer is paper. It's mm. you know, money on paper, okay? But there are times where those monies now have to come physically. There are different arrangements that the central bank made for to draw on its uh, accounts in the for, in, in the foreign countries, or even the the ordinary banks or some institution also through special arrangement bring more physical money into the country, U.S. and in this case United States dollars. Good. <clears throat> now I'm to up flight, and we're going to get to the meat of it. We want to lay the foundation. And that's what we do here at Focus on Liberia where we educate, we elevate, and promote all things Liberia. We are in conversation with Mr. Ellis Coffey. He's uh, currently a senior business development consult consultant at Ellen Burner International. That's a management consulting firm. Formerly, he headed the Financial Intelligence Unit in Liberia. And, and the way I like to refer to the Financial Intelligence Unit is the FBI of money in <laughs> Liberia. So he makes me laugh all the time. Capital flight, or uh, when I was when we were uh, what people refer to as normal days, I don't know what's normal about it because I was still suffering, so I don't think that was normal, but that's another story. There was uh, when uh, the dual coins were printed and they said this was supposed to prevent capital flight because money was leaving the country. Now there was a situation where people couldn't take the dual coins out, so they said what we heard was it was they were preventing capital flight. So when you talk about capital flight, I remember that. Now, when a government is formed in Liberia and a lot of Liberians leave and go to, from US and go to Liberia to work, some of them are paying money, their mortgages in like in America. Some are sending money to their people in America. Even people in America, they have buildings in Liberia, they rent and send the money. Some, is that something that will cause capital flight? I think I think um, I had spoken to that before mm -hmm. when I was in Liberia. I think it depends on the the quantity, the quantum of money that is being transferred. So if you if you can isolate that in terms of people who are working in in Liberia who have um, families in the States. It's not just in the States. There are people who have families in West Africa. There are people who have, um, somebody has their family, their wife and their children in West Africa and working in Liberia. Yeah. So he can support his family in, 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 in that West African country. It can be Africa, it can be Ghana. And of course, traditionally, we, 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 we are in the US. Some people are in, in France, some people are in, 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 in England, in Europe. So they send their money to support the family, but look at it this way. How much, how many people are there that do this transfer? Mm -hmm. What amount do they really transfer? How much, first of all, how much are they making in Liberia? And how much do they really transfer? Okay. And how much of that, of their income is left in Liberia for their upkeep in Liberia and the other things they are doing. Mind you, these people that are working in Liberia, they are also trying to establish themselves in Liberia so that they can bring their families 
eventually, okay, so they are building houses. They are acquiring different properties. They are, some of them are making business because their intention was not to leave their country and go abroad and stay there. Some of them left the country as a result of the war. Some of them left the country because they wanted to come to school. They wanted to get international exposure and go back home. So they, 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 some of them, their wives are, is in the other country working and supporting maybe half of the family and he's bringing his half. So, but compare that now, compare that with the amount of money that people have brought remit to Liberia, to their families and friends in Liberia, okay? And you can debate the percentage, whether some, some years it was 40% of GDP, but there's a lot of money, okay? And, and these people are sending all these monies comparatively. There are more people that send money. So in the, in the wake of capital flight, I don't think in my, in my opinion and from studies that I've done in Liberia, I don't think that amounts to, you know, sweeping out the money from Liberia. So it amounts to the kind of capital flight we are talking about. Yeah. The capital flight we are talking about is mostly in business. All right, people who are transferring money, purporting that they are, they are, they are, they are, they are ordering goods. Um, other people who are in Liberia, they just go there and register a business and purporting to doing, you know, I won't be specific um, because these are FIU studies, these are work that FIU done, um, they are transferring money out of Liberia millions and millions of dollars why is it do no business or people that are doing business and you know that there's no restriction also on yeah. even the huge businesses whether it's the mining companies or the rubber companies or whatever there's no restriction on transferring their monies from mm -hmm. Liberia okay uh, so these are the things that amount to the capital flight the capital flight yes no that's a very good point there about the, the, the other way around, because looking at the numbers, even though we don't have uh, statistics about, of uh, how much is leaving the country, but at least we have an idea of how much is leaving, for instance, the, the, the diaspora going back into the country. And that's a very good chunk of GDP. So you have a point right there. Let's talk about your printing money and how it's put into circulation. We were talking about earlier about how money comes to the country. And we are building this up to see where this shortage of money in the bank coming from. How is the Labrian dollar printed and put into circulation? So before I go into that, I was talking about uh, foreign currency coming into the country physically. So um, before I go into that, so let me let me clear the foreign currency part. Sometimes um, the central bank of Liberia, because Liberia does not, let me make it clear, Liberia does not print United States dollars. That is a currency for the US. So I don't think any other country has a right to print that money. So Liberia does not print US dollars. So because Liberia does not print US dollars, um, the CBL, the Central Bank of Liberia, make necessary arrangement to bring US dollars physically into the country, mostly by um, airplane to the airport. And that money, of course, they draw that special arrangement. Liberia must have an account abroad with some international organization or other assets or other arrangement that they draw on. For example, you heard um, there was a story in the front page Africa on December 6th that confirmed that um, the government of Liberia brought 58 million US dollars into the country to help the liquidity challenge. That was um, 2019 December story. So yes, the central bank to arrange. Also commercial banks can bring money, but they have to make that arrangement. Mm -hmm. And then other institutions such as embassy, United Nations, and those people can bring physical money into the country, but that has to be arranged with the, the central bank. And to a large extent, the central bank shares that information when the arrangement is made, when this money is about to come in the country, central bank shares that information with 
the um, Liberal Revenue Authority because they are the custom guys. They will be there to receive that money and stuff. And sometimes they share that information with the Financial Intelligence Unit as well. And as you know, individuals can also bring, or businesses, small businesses can also bring money into the country. But there are regulations that cover that. You can bring up to um, anything less than 10,000 in the country freely without no question asked, except there's a suspicion that you're into some activity. Mm -hmm. Of course, that one that immigration people and, and custom people would deal with that at the airport. But anytime you bring in anything more than ten thousand from ten thousand dollars up there, you gotta fill up the you gotta say you gotta answer a question on the immigration form that says, Are you bringing ten thousand or more in the country? Then you say yes. That on the immigration lending card, you know. But again, that regulation is barely being enforced in Liberia. Mm -hmm. It's barely being enforced. Right. Okay. So how does um, uh, money is printed? And circulated, because let, let, let's, let's lead that into the circul uh, circulation of money now from the printing to the put into circulation. OK. So of course, you, we all know that um, it is by law and they, they, it's by legislative approval. Uh, Central bank takes care of the monetary policy and all the money business, you know, but before they print money, the legislature must approve. You know, recently there has been an argument about whether the central bank must be given a free hand to um, just uh, to print money without going to the legislature. That's an argument. And then once that um, once that um, that legislative um, resolution is obtained at, for both houses, because the the senate has to pass, the re representative has to pass on it, the senate has to pass on it in their resolution and then um central bank initiate the procurement process procurement process include you know which um which printing company to hire whether tomo de la rue whether crane currency or whatever and then all that kind of. then when that process is completed the money is shipped mostly by sea but sometimes by air so um when the money is shipped there's a process for CBL to go and receive that money from the port. Um, there's some autonomy that the CBL has on that to receive that money. At that point, it's called bank notes. It's not money yet. It's not Labrador dollar yet because it's in cages. It's called bank note. That money is taken and taken to an account that, you know, accounting is done on it. Comparing to what the people send to them, there's all the paperwork that come along with it. That money is put in what central bank calls the reserve vault. That money is taken and put in the central bank of Liberia reserve vault. Bang. Auditors, CBA auditors will come and check it and take record of it. And the different people will have their record of it. Once that money is put in a vault, then it's called bingo. Okay, so then the 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 um, then it's then it's, it's there. Then it's ready to be put in circulation. Okay, what does that mean? Put in circulation. So putting in circulation now means when, for all intents and purposes, CBLs to the money flow. So if CBA needs to put money in circulation, they will now, the paperwork they have to pass through to take that money physically, to take the bank notes from the reserve vault to put it in what we call a CBL operating vault. So now when they take it from there, it becomes money. It becomes Liberian dollar. Okay. Now, that money Sac money in circulation begins at that point. Okay, so CBL now will relate to the banking institution and they will draw on what they have at the CBL. Okay, all right. So central bank will now give the money. Central bank has its own customer to government library as its biggest customer. So it also 
as a requirement to pay salaries to other things and to you know pay for government procurement go to uh, honor government checks and stuff like that like these rural projects and things like that most of these things some accounts are held in commercial bank but um most of the the activities for the government is held with the government's account at the central bank so the government the central bank also has has a relationship with um, so so service. I learned the circular flow of money, but before we come to that, what what do we check? Let's say we are we are about to print money, okay? How do we ensure that we are not printing too much or too little, or that uh, the money that was in circulation before is being replaced? Or what what goes on in there for us to be able to have that equal, equilibrium? So every time when the central bank were to print money, there's a reason why central bank. Every, every, uh, in the Federal Reserve here, we put the print money. There's a reason why they print money. Um, so there is how much money is supposed to be in the economy. Mm. That's a factor. Okay, how is the economy growing? I mean, economy meaning business activities, you know, the whole um, uh, medium exchange activity, buying goods, the trading, all that stuff. How much money is needed to support all that? How much Liberian dollar is needed to support the activities in the country? So the central bank would do its own study and set that. So based on that, the central bank said, oh, we don't have enough money in, in, in the country, both in reserve and circulation and all that. So we need to order money. Then when the whole paperwork right. that they have to justify to the legislature, they will be hearing and all that stuff, why they want to earn the money. Also, also, Another aspect is um, replacement of mutilated money. That is, well, in, in simple language, they call it the tier money. Right. Okay. So every country, they, they replace, even in the United States, except that the difference between our currency and those big currency, you, you, United States, that are, the quality is stronger. So our money fade away faster. 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 I mean, and, and it, is, it, it takes a number of years. But. Money. Yeah. Listen, where does the tier tier money go? So, so when the tier tier money is moved from the market, there's, the central bank has a, a a place to keep that money, but then they they, they have a process also to destroy that money. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so what do we have before we print money? Because money is good, right? So I'll just be printing money. What is it that we need that will back the money that we are printing? Is it that we need? Uh, this level of GDP growth, we need this level. What is it that we need to give us the wherewithal to print money or more money? Again, that's the that's the economics of printing money and which lies within the monetary unit uh, CBL. But the factors that, like I explained, are simply put the economic activity. And with this, in this case, now we're talking about like green dollars. The yeah. economic activities that are going to the country. What amount of money? This country needs to have for at this at this period of time. So now they can do forecasts too. It's not just saying okay. They'll do the forecast and say okay. In this is period, that we need that does that or who who does it? Is that a special group that come up with this accounting CBS? The, the central bank of Nigeria. Okay. Now let's talk and about the monetary the arm of the country because money printed eventually goes away. So let's talk about how this whole thing works. The circular flow of money, just one cent, one one minute. Okay, so like I started, the the is is in economic terms again, it can be complicated. There's a whole diagram that you know with mm. um, income and how it moves. There's a whole diagram, but simply, right? As I started describing earlier, when the money gets to the CBA vault, it goes to the bank, and it goes from the banks, it goes to the people. All right, and people meaning businesses, human, I mean, ordinary citizens, uh, people who are paid by the CBL um, to, uh, for different reasons that I mentioned, government uh, checks and stuff like that. People who keep their money in the in the different commercial banks, uh, the nine commercial banks that we have, uh, they too they take the money from the bank. Now they're supposed to do economic activity, buying goods, selling goods. Do, do, do. At the end of the day, the money should end back into the bank. Right. All right. And when the money end back into the bank for the re uh, reserve requirement purposes for other reasons, those banks are supposed to send much on the money back to the CBL. 
Okay, so that completes the cycle. Then the money comes back. It comes back. So economic activity goes on. Forward. Yeah. Okay. But if the money is not coming back in the bank, economic activity still go on. Right? That means that what they say, uh, the money there's is outside of the banking system. Yeah. Okay, it's not is in circulation. Circulation means it starts circulation starts from the cycle of flow starts from is the circulation right yeah. money circulation from the central bank uh, operating vault to bureau of central bank customers to the banks who are constant central bank customers as well to the people who own their monies in the bank the, the money is not for the bank the yeah. bank only make its profit on the different different charges it makes you know on your account and all the mm -hmm. services for the wire transfers that's how they make their money but most of the money they keep with you and they take the loan to other people it's not for them it's for the people who put their money in the bank all right yeah. so yeah. those people do economic activity outside of the bank then they're supposed to bring the money back into the right. bank now the problem is the problem we have in the in Liberia is the money is not in the bank not that the money is not in the country and that's the big thing we're coming to now so before we and, get and, and, and let me be specific when it comes to Liberian dollars yeah the U.S. dollar, we can say, it could live through all the different different means. But the Liberian dollar, the, un, the last time I checked, the only reason why Liberian dollars would be outside of the country is the exchange market that is going on in different countries, nearby countries, most specifically in Guinea, right? So people go there to buy goods, right? right. So they go to the, somewhere in the border to the marketplace and then they buy. They, they carry the Liberian dollars, they buy uh, Guinea Sifa to buy goods. And if they come yeah, back, yeah. they put back the Guinea Sifa they have to buy Liberian dollars to buy goods. So there's a whole activity going on down there. Mm. But other than that, most of the money is it stays there. in the country. Unless but the you problem here is outside of the bank. Mm. It's not in the central bank, there's not a lot in the central bank, that's not a lot in the commercial bank, it is outside. Hmm. Except yeah. where the money is mutilated, tier tier. But still, the mutilated money is still in circulation because, unfortunately, when the central bank is constrained, that money where it's supposed to destroy, it puts it outside. Yeah, hmm. Hmm. Thank you. you do it to, to destroy it, but when it gets tough, central bank puts the money back, the tier tier money, so the tier money also circulating. That brings us to what we are here for tonight, which is why is this money shortage in Liberia? Why is there a liquidity problem in Liberia? Or put it another way, why is money not sufficient in the country? Let me put it another way again. Why is money not sufficient in the banking system? Why? Yeah, we will say, why is the money not sufficient in the banking system? That's how I put it. I wouldn't say, why is money, except the central bank makes a determination as it would do that, oh, there is, um, we need, according to the economy, according to this, according to the tier tier money, we need to print more money, all right? Now, why is money not into, so it is not that, because I have not heard that the central bank has determined that, oh, um, the last time I checked, I think um, we had about, um, 32 billion Liberian dollars or so, uh, plus the new one has been printed. So, but they, 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 um, they, 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 the determination of the printing here, for example, the central bank said that um, the reason why we don't have money in the bank, according to the, the press release, is because we say we wanted 7.5 billion. Yeah, but the legislature approved four billion, and because they didn't approve the whole seven point five billion, that is why we are having the liquidity problem. So there's a need to print a a balance three point five billion. But the question that people will ask is that, well, you just brought four billion. Where is that four billion? Yeah. Okay. Why do you think that what happened to the other money in the last few years, you also printed um, 
15.5 billion plus another five, uh, 10 billion plus you know, 90, a total of 19.5 billion. Yeah. Plus, you know, so the uh, 10 billion, the 5.5 billion plus this uh, 4 billion in the last few years. Why is it that that money is not in the banking system? So do you think that when you print this other 3.5, that's when the whole situation will change around? Because there is money in the system, but except that the money is not in the bank. Now you just put, you just brought, um, just, um, you just, uh, I think it was uh, July, 2019, you just brought 4 billion. So no, I think it was uh, July, 2020, 2020, you just brought 4 billion. So you want to bring 3.5. Where is the four billion? It's not lost, it's in the country. So the thing that is keeping the money outside the banking system, that way you gotta fight. That gotta, you gotta clean that one up first. Do we know it? Yeah, we have some ideas. Okay. Okay, so we have some, you know, different reasons why the money is keep uh, outside there. Some people say, oh, lack of confidence, but there is something that is causing the lack of confidence. Because the lack of confidence is because I gave my money to Dennis Ja, and every time I come for my money, Dennis Ja's explaining the story. Hmm. Oh, my man, we small man. We the woman here, let the woman go for it. Oh, my man, we are coming. You know? Okay, hold on here. Maybe he get the money there, but he will waste time, waste time. I will sit down, he will give me tea, he will do all kind of stuff before he gives me the money. So, my man, I don't care my money to that man again, man. All right? I keep my own money. You see that? So because Dennis Jai is not giving me his money, my money, the way he's supposed to be giving my money every time I want my money. So it's the same problem with the bank. So that's why I bring in the lack of confidence. But what is leading to that lack of confidence? What is leading to the fact that the money is not in the bank? That the guy puts his money in the bank, he's not getting his money. Okay? Why it is that the money is outside? Number one. I mean, take it or leave it because they're hiding the money. Okay, people hoarding could be different ways. If I say I'm not putting my money in, the, you know, it may not be wrong. I decide to keep my money the way I want to keep my money. It, there's nothing force me to say I must keep my money in the bank. But like you hear, there are different reasons why people put money in the bank. Like uh, Samuel Jackson said, one of the reasons is security. Because you can't keep a, a certain amount of money. But if I can have a safe or a bunker, and put my money in there and do my economic activities, I won't carry it to the bank that will not give me my money. Okay? Right. So, and this problem, nobody, it's, it, it's an old, it's, it started long time. It's not just this few years. This thing started creeping long time. Yeah. Okay. But at certain times, there were other things that were available that were counteracting that. There were other things that were going on that were counteracting that. But now, over this year, there seems to be a lack of those things that is happening. Mm -hmm. Or there was, seems to be other things that are going on that are facilitating this process. All right. So, hoarding is one of it. People are holding their money, individuals holding their money, businesses are holding their money, large businesses are also holding their money because, you know, but, but these people need to do business activities. They need to bring goof. All right. But there is other things when, when the word cartel is used in this, in this, it means people coming together for a purpose. So over the years in Liberia, all right, the best certain business people come together to hold the money with a purpose of determining the exchange rate or determining who business people come to to exchange money to send for their goods. To the extent that some of these people are making good business. Yeah. Okay. So the ordinary Latvian businesswoman or businessman or ordinary person, it may not be person who is selling 
a shop in Liberia who needs goods for 26 or Christmas or at any point, would necessarily just go to this guy to change my money. And then there's also Hawala going on there. The Hawala where, okay, I will give you the code, 50,000, 100,000, they will send for in China or in Togo, Tokyo or Guinea or wherever country. I'm not being specific, I'm not disclosing a specific country here, but it happens. So there is activities going outside of the bank that is keeping the money outside of the bank. But Mr. Coffey, are these people yeah. talking to each other? Is it actually a cartel that is keeping the money outside? Do they know, like, is it a group that is doing this and they are yeah. aware of what they're doing? Yeah, but cartel we mean people coming together for a particular purpose. Mm. In this, in this, in this, in this uh, discussion, cartel means the business, some huge business people coming together to control the exchange rate and also to control economic transfer activities, mm. right? And um, so that is happening. And unfortunately from, we with the financial intelligence, if you call it the FBI of money, there are other things that are done too, that to, the Kuku Jumuku is done too. So these, these, these processes may be, been, may be facilitated um, by, by other people, uh, by you know, state actors for, for um, different reasons, for different reasons, all right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's to control the exchange rate mm -hmm. or whether it's to control something else, you know, but different reasons, but there are activities going on. You see how people brought goods into the country. There is money into the bank, but it's not enough yeah. to give you, so the bank is now rationing the money. How you think the, the people operating. How you think the people are in that goods? Are they going to the bank? No. So this, but these activities are going on. So people are are doing business outside of the banking system instead of going back to the bank because for different reasons. Okay, because over the years, the confidence crisis has been building up. Right. And over in in any country in any economic activities, these things will go, and not only Liberia, right. this whole hoarding, this whole cartel, it happens in, every, in everywhere, okay? But we have not been able to fight it heads on, right. right? And I can tell you also that our own behavior or lack of action is helping the process. Our appetite for corruption is also helping that process. Because once we, the bribery system, once we are giving something a bribe, mm -hmm. then we take our eye over what we're supposed to do to enforce those laws. So over time, we help this process. These negativities that are going on, we, we as librarian and officials over the years, we help this process, state actors mm -hmm. help this process. The people who are involved in the monetary, uh, monetary regime, the people who are involved in the fiscal regime, the people who are involved with the money business, uh, you know, security people who are supposed to mend these things to enforce, you know, to arrest people. Also, you know, when, when people are compromised, it's difficult. Liberia has good laws. Even though some of them need in, in, in fixing yeah. here and there, the central bank has some good policies and things. The central bank used to intervene in the market. And that's what I'm talking about. So mm -hmm. in this case now, how how you know what are some of the areas or the people the departments the ministry that are supposed to intervene okay for example um the you know central banks around the world intervene in different ways policy direction okay and different um, products and also the central bank also can intervene in the market by in encouraging businesses, but there has to be an incentive for them to bring their bags of money to the bank. Okay, mm -hmm. there has to be an incentive, maybe giving them uh, US dollars to trade with or giving them um, good rates as comparable, and that would determine how the exchange rate goes up some way, somewhere. But the central bank does intervene. But as a now that we have this problem, the question is does the central bank has that kind of money? 
the sustainable bank have that kind of money to intervene the way it used to intervene a few years ago? Right. But, but Mr. Coffey, the, 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 the central bank on its website diagnosed the problem and wanted a way and wanted to intervene a certain way. According to the central bank, they, as you stated earlier, they need to print additional money. Because they say, well, we asked for seven billion, you gave us four billion, now we want to print three billion more. Is the central bank wrong? Why is it? And you already said it wrong, right? Mm -hmm. Why would they say that? Is it incompetence or is it they don't know what they're doing or they're just misdiagnosing the problem? Well, no. Wrong is relative, okay? okay? I wouldn't say the central bank is wrong. The question that I ask is, okay, if this, if you say the central bank on your central bank website that knows the problem, we, I mean, I read the, I read the memo myself. But is this why did this? The question is, you have four million, four billion. Yeah. Could it not solve some of the problem? Is it solving some of the problem? We just um. Few years ago, we just had um, 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 15.5 billion. They call it 16, but it's 15.5 billion actually. So we just have 15.5 billion coming to the country. So then we want another 7.5 billion. But the things that are that are keeping the money outside of the banking system, we're not addressing it. You know, how do we? We don't have a regulation, for example, on hoarding. The last time I checked, we don't have one. And enforcement is a problem, mm -hmm. okay? Right, so we have the issue of, also besides holding, we have the issue of mutilation, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. money. I mean, the more the money stay in circulation, the more the money stay out there, the more the money destroys. So that, that portion is also there, it's mm -hmm. impacting, okay? Now, if the central bank says they, 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 they They've quantified that um, mutilated money is 7.5 billion, so they want to replace the mutilated money. But this that is a gift, that is that is a point. But they also have to ensure that this money does not stay in, I mean, outside of the banking system. Yeah. So yeah. the factors that it cause the money to stay outside of the banking system, they have to address that. So adding money on top of money, on top of money, and the money stay, continue to stay us at the banking system, will not solve the problem. That's what we're saying. We're not saying don't allow central bank to bring additional money. Okay. What we're saying is they continue to bring money, but it continue to stay us at the bank. Small time, it will stay us at the bank. After some time, it will stay us at the bank. Then we'll go bring that money. Is this what we'll be doing? Let's address the problem. Now, these are the things that are bringing confidence crisis in the banking system because the money is not there. So. The guy comes for his money, the money is not given to him. So, or it's not given to her. So I'll keep my money. Okay, All right. Yeah. There are other things, you know, things like uh, effective um, um, that will that will bring confidence in the people, effective, you know, customer inclusion, and like I said, regulation on hoarding. They yeah. have to revise yeah. the, the transfer regulation and enforce it. And 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 that will give central bank the power to be intervening in the market. All right, let us know this is focused on Liberia. We are discussing why is there insufficient money in the Liberian banks and how we can resolve it. So it, there should be a relationship because of money not plenty in the bank or insufficient, but the money in the country. How does that relate to uh, inflation, you know, exchange rate, the prices and, and, and all that? Is it because not much money in the bank will have higher prices. The exchange rate. How do all these things relate? That's that's a good question, and and you know, I think in my in my in my opinion, in my you know, I think what is going on in Liberia when it comes to inflation and exchange rate and the prices of goods and services, I think it's artificial. Okay. What? I think it's artificial. Somebody doing that? <laughs> because if you look at inflation, they say inflation is this when prices rise, 
right? When, that is when prices of goods and services go up. But the purchasing power of the people fall within a given period of time, right? Okay. So inflation is high. That is, whether it's 25%, whether it's 35% is high when the exchange rate is increasing. Okay, why prices are also increasing? That means your currency, the Liberian dollar is getting weaker against the US dollars. On the flip side, inflation is lower when the exchange rate is decreasing while prices of goods and services is also decreasing. That means the currency is getting strong. Okay, what is happening to Liberia is, as I heard, they say inflation is low. As we all know, the exchange rate moved from 200 there about, right now it's hovering between 150 to six, 160, and it's been like that for a little while, right? So as I heard, they say inflation is low. Inflation has moved from 30% to, if I, if I still remember the figure from, from tonight, that's a huge improvement. Yeah. And exchange rate, as we all know, exchange rate has moved, it used to be around 205, 210, 200, but it came down to between 150 to 160. But Dennis, you are Liberian, even though you are in Atlanta, but I know you deal with Liberia every day. Yeah. Prices are high yeah. and increasing. So what is inflation? We said high so price. Inflation is low. Actually, rate is low, but prices are high. Should, the prices should go. That's economic activity. That's economics. As simple as I may pull it. Right now, inflation is low for this given period. Exchange rate is low for this given period. But prices within this given period are high and they're still increasing. But economics say they all go like this. So yeah. the, 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 the Liberian dollar, quote unquote, seems to be stronger against the US dollar because the exchange rate has dropped tremendously. From 200 to 160, that's a lot. But the prices do not go with the. So what is happening is the ordinary person who 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 used to change the ten dollars and got two thousand dollars for example and bought goods around up you know around one thousand five around one thousand seven the person gets ten the same ten dollars today the person can only change it for one one thousand five or one fifty and buy the same goods so that means the person needs additional five dollars. Or additional ten dollars. Hmm. Okay. So we who send our money to the people that our woman and thing and that we have to increase the money. They say you got to increase the money. I, I, but it's actually gone down, but the prices stay high. So let's so look in your in your in your in your in your, in your sense now. Look at it. Is this economics? Is it yeah. realistic? Sometimes uh, the uh, the labyrinth situation defy definition because remember now I gave you one example uh, on employment. Mm -hmm. If you look at labor unemployment, I think it's maybe lower than America's unemployment, right? Why? Because unemployment means people that are actively looking for jobs. But if you live in Banasbe, why would you even actively look for jobs? So unemployment will be low, but in actual sense, people are not working. So, And I brought that in to just tell you that uh, sometimes the definition, the, the book definition does seem really jive with reality on the ground. Yeah, a few years ago, not um, during this time, a uh, few years ago, I mean, I think four or five years ago, uh, they just put an unemployment rate. I'm like, okay, this, I, I think it was at it. Uh, they, they gave, they'd say, okay, people who are actively employed, mm -hmm. it's this percentage. People who are vulnerably employed, that means if you're pushing your wheelbarrow every day, that means you're vulnerable employed. You are counted as being employed. So that number, I think when you put all that together, it means that. If seven percent of the population were employed, which, which is not the case, because they are fifteen percent and, and and or thirteen percent there about, so it's not realistic. So. And, and because of because of time, mm -hmm. let's go to the solutions. 
Because, uh, for instance, you say the people don't have confidence to take their money in the bank, they are holding it, right? So mm -hmm. that cycle of flow, some, some in between there, something is cut off. So the money is not going back to the bank. How do we fix it? So, the, like I said, the CBL has to intervene with this hoarding business. How? Through policy, through exactly. enforcement of what they have, through intervention into the market. Okay? Uh, intervention into the market, what, what liquidity they have, they got to squeeze it up and, and intervene with the, the, the business people to exchange um, um, like rent dollars for US dollar, US dollar for that. Because it is funny that even even um, US dollar is short, like rent dollar is short. Mm. So, so, so let's say if uh, those business people that are holding the money, the government mm -hmm. can go and issue them uh, bonds and say, okay, here's a piece of paper, give me your money, let me put it back in the bank. Is that a good thing to do? That's another thing to do, to give them bonds, to encourage them to, to treat the money, because that, in that case, now they're bringing physical money. So, but what CBA used to do, they used to bring, um, they used to do the exchange, actually the physical money, but these people used to come to the bank. Okay, right. and they target, they have a list of businesses that they target. So they target these businesses and these businesses will bring the money in the bank and they do the exchange and they do the exchange. So it's a government wide thing. Um, they, the way CBA used to do it, CBA needs to go back to his book. And one of the things I would say is that, you know, the CBA needs to be given chance to do its work. Yeah. All right. Sometimes there's so much uh, political, political. Yeah. Mr. Coffey, that depends if you know what they're doing, right? No, but sometimes there's too much political influence. Influences. The CBA should be left free to do its work. The CBA can do that work. Hmm. Okay. And Let's the CBA need to be in the market, but the CBA needs to be given chance to do its work. That's, yeah. Once the CBA is given its chance to do this work, um, they will obtain some liquidity to intervene in the market the way they used to do, mm -hmm. and that will bring a, a you know a relief. And once they do that, it brings a relief. And once the people you know once they start, what well, they have to deal with how the money. Is not hoarded outside. That's the mm. key thing they have to do. But to mop up liquidity, they got to in, intervene in the market the way they used to do years back. Okay, key word mop up. Because that was what uh, the minister did before, right? Mop up exercise. Mm. What happened to other? They didn't solve the problem, right? They didn't? You 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 heard me say the way CBA used to do it years before. Okay. I didn't say the way they did it two years ago. The way they used to do it years ago, the way the standard way it is it's been done. Right. What it's is that? Nationally a separate standard way, and the way the CBA used to do it, they have businesses they target those businesses. They invite them to bring their money. They exchange their money at a good rate. And right. they go to their business and they hold up liquidity. That's how CBA has been doing it. Right. So the unconventional way that the, the minister did, it never used to be like that. But you give it to money changes. You didn't hear it from me. Okay. <laughs> you work uh FIU, right? To what extent this whole liquidity issue and FYU money laundering, Wahala, uh supporting you know all those different things i don't know to what extent which one you can reveal money laundering terrorist finance and other financial crimes to what extent is this a uh, current liquidity issue you know this can be responsible money laundering has a greater part to play you you used to catch some people when you were at FIU. <laughs> yeah we 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 did um for example um Say with the with the library revenue authority, there were a lot of people who were doing um, they were cheating their money from taxes. All right, they were cheating their business money from taxes, and we brought a lot of things to light. And the 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 um, LRA was able to follow those leads and to you know get millions of dollars back from those companies mm -hmm. from those businesses. All right, let me let me read some comments. We'll put them on your screen. 
The first one is from Mr. Sam Wallow, and I want you to help answer the question. Say, is there another topic focused on Liberia can bring attention to other than the economy? A lot more going on. This topic has been beaten to death. Mr. Coffey, your response. I think I think I think Sam is right. The topic has been discussed, has been beaten to death. So, but again, um, this is it's his lifeblood, it's the problem that's happening in the country. So, in as much as it's been beating the death, I will agree with him, but we still got to throw our light on it to see how we can throw our viral ideas into to help our country. That's all we're trying to do because it's a lifeblood situation. It's like, oh, the person dying, we not do all the CPR, CPR, we not do all the CPAE. CPR, everything, let lead that person, let go to another person, you know. So I agree with him, but again, I, I, it's, I don't think, yeah, there are other topics to be discussed concurrently. So that's the rightness of what he said. Yeah, and, and I, I don't agree with him, even though uh, Tavino co agrees. It's Sam Wallow, I know, right? This broken record. Uh, my answer is uh, it's, no, it's not. If you, if you, besides here, if you go to any other Forum, you don't hear economy, right? It's all politics. You know, who who did what in government? We choose the president. That's what people talk about. We don't talk about the economy and we don't, we, people don't break it down the way we do here at Focus on Labor. And that's why it's very important that we discuss the economy because there is no country that will prosper with having the best politician. It's all about the economy. America is not on top because of its military or because of the politician, it's the economy. So yes, Economy, economy, economy. But Sam is uh, he did very well. He's he's uh he also gave us some topics that we need to talk about. He said, hey, you can talk about healthcare, education, good governance, judicial reform, job creation, decentralization, waste management, and so on and so forth. Thank you, Sam. Oh, uh, there's a question here from Jimmy Eastman. Very good. Uh, how does Mr. Coffee suggest the bank addresses the problem? keeps the money out of the banking system. How can that problem be addressed? The, the problem that is keeping the money out of the banking system, Jimmy is asking, how can you address that? Yeah, you asked me that question earlier and I I made the recommendation about um, how uh, the CBA can intervene into um, this hoarding business, minimizing the hoarding business how you can intervene with the business as it used to do years back. Okay. You know, so, you know, they, they got to bring some some money in somewhere, somehow, mm. and, and intervene in the market. Yeah. And uh, Samuel Hammer is, would it be wise to use our own currency, like what West African, other West African countries do? I say, yes, we are using our own currency, except that we have the US dollar. So that's the question. Yeah, so the next question is also part of part of it. Um, but this guy is talking about mobile money. So the the yes, uh, they are even you know in the in the past administration, they came to a point where they had legislative debate and all, but there are things that are inhibiting Liberia from making that bull step. All right. You know, there was all this consideration about the prices of our export, our balance and payment, and things like that. But um I think eventually we should we should move to our we should move to a single currency regime eventually. Yeah. yeah. And that's the question that is is one of the most highly dollarized economies in the world. Yes. Do you think moving to a single currency or mobile money, she added, is the answer? Because we're well, moving to like I said, moving to a single currency will eventually you know, minimize some of the problems we are having because our country is being is a attractive to all this money laundering and terrorist financing because the fact that um, if not the only, we are the next, the other country that uses US dollar and Liberian dollar concurrent, I mean, at the same time. So we must put this US dollar business once. Also the issue of mobile money, I will agree, but it, it has its own process as well. And, and the whole thing about mobile money, we're talking, yes, it's a it's, it's, it's part of it, but we cannot, of course, the, the state gotta, it's a terrible country, the state gotta be some, 
you know, um, cash, you know, you know, physical cash usage in a country. You can't just, it's, it, it's a good thing to do. I would encourage yeah, yeah. for us to improve the mobile money, but you can, you still got to you know, have the shocks, um, the shock absorbers for the use of physical cash. All right. Uh, Musu Stewart say this is a cash based economy, poor banking system. Depositors have no incentives to put their money in the bank. So, cash hoarding that's what's taking place. Yeah, that is what we, we talk about the cost customer inclusion. Say, for example, I, I have a small business, for example, and I open a checking account and I'm struggling to bring my business up. And every day, pump, tell it out. Wow. Every month at the end of the period, I tell you that before I go, I end up in, 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 in negative, right? I end up in negative as compared to here, I can open a small business account. All I need to do is maintain a setting balance. Once I maintain that balance, they will not charge me. And even if I come below that balance, how much do they charge me? $10. Now, those arrangements are going on in Liberia as well. Where? Right? So, like, for example, I know I've been. Through my consultancy, I've been talking to some businesses in Liberia. You know, they also have that process where small business can only be charged ten dollars monthly. But it should also in, in, in include the process where if you keep a certain minimum um, a, a balance, they will not charge you. That's incentive to keep your money there. But this whole perception, this whole thing about the the uh, lack of confidence in the in the banking system, we gotta we gotta get rid of it, and eventually we we'll do those things. So you, then that, that person is also right. Okay. Well, then, the US dollar became weaker over the last 12 to 18 months, hence reversing the inflation value of the Labyrinth dollar. But goods are still the same price at the height of inflation. Hence, things are still hard. I think he agrees with you. Yeah, that is something that we talked about. Yeah. Jimmy Eastman, Mr. Coffee, is the government heavy borrowing against CBL reserves eroding confidence in the banking system? Yes, it's, it's one of the factors, Jimmy. It's, it's one of the factors, as well as um, even the, the, the operating, like we said, the administrative cost, the operating cost of, of the central bank and some of these banks is also, you know, a problem, you know. So if you look at central bank's uh, financial statement for December 31st, 2019, it tells you the amount of income they're getting versus the, the, the administrative expenses. So, you know, where is the excess? Where is the difference coming from? So these things too are on. Yeah. It must just say the Minister of Finance is capable of running that ministry now as you look at it. George, I'm sorry, I wouldn't answer that. I, I will I will try to exercise what you call the fifth amendment on that <laughs> question. <laughs> okay, but but let, let me ask it this way. What can the finance ministry do? To help with uh, this liquidity shortage, the Minister of Finance. Yeah, I want to keep my discussion within the the Central Bank of Liberia. No, but but I don't know why because it is is it, is it when it comes to the liquidity issue, is the Finance Ministry hands off? Does it have any role to play? Well, the the Finance Ministry, the. There's this fiscal arm of the government. So they work hand in hand, all right? So to some extent, the, the finance ministry has a good, uh, should have working relationship with the, with the central bank. They work together. The, the fiscal versus monetary policy, they work together. In all these, for example, the, the, when the spring meeting used to be held at the um, in the U.S. here, they go to the spring meeting together, they make presentations together, so they on the economy. So yes, they work together. Hmm. Musu is also saying, is it possible for the government of Liberia to ask for professional assistance? Because whatever they're using, she said, things are not working. Yeah, that is why, in fact, when 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 the other brother said that this issue is a broken record, that is why, you know, some of us take the time to come and explain because uh, Liberia is our country. It's, you know, it's like um, Darius Delon says, the country is the only country that we cannot be deported from. 
So unless you are dual citizen. Huh? I say unless you are dual citizen. <laughs> you ask me, my citizen, I'm like Liberian citizen. No, that's what I'm saying. I mean, those who got born and raised in Liberia, but they have citizenship somewhere else, they lost that. But anyway, that's so what I a different topic, but I'm a Liberian citizen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. okay. I, I'm not uh, talking about the economy. Uh, uh -huh. And then our, our friend Sam said, which is we're beating this uh, dead record. Jackie Sai said the economy is important. Almost all other subjects revolve around the economy. And that's a true statement. I, even, I wanted to even say a biblical statement. Jackie is right. I mean, yeah. Because and Musu say we, we have to keep talking about the economy even in the absence of any progress being made. So, yes, the economy, the economy, the economy. Mr. Coffey, I don't want to keep you too long. You <laughs> you told me about your time constraints, so let's wrap this up. The uh, your final word has to why this is happening and how we can resolve it. If nothing else, my audience take away today what is it that you want them to leave with regarding why we have the money shortage and how it can be addressed. I think the 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 the, the thing here is. Um... Number one, we got to be realistic, okay? We got to give the central bank the chance to do its work. The central bank has done these things for years. And why it is true that Liberia has a dual currency and things like that, over the years, the central bank has been able to contain this problem for a long while. So the central bank must be given a chance to do its work. The central bank must, you know, some way, somehow, some, you know, funds from wherever, reserve or wherever, must be employed for the central bank to intervene in the market immediately. Okay, the 3.5 billion dollar will not cut it. The central bank must be able to challenge the hoarding that is going on in the system. And once the central bank challenged the hoarding that is going on in the system, and the central bank issued all these different policy and, 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 and revised their, their, their laws or give a law, but also enforcement, enforcement, enforcement. Once we can do that immediately, then we can start the process of restoring confidence in a system, but there are other things that go along with it. But immediately, no, 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 no. Mm. Take your hands off the central bank and allow it to do its job. Get some money from whatever reserve, wherever, capitalize, as they say, give it to the central bank, let the central bank intervene in the market directly with the people that are influencing businesses, the cartel or whatever, that is influencing this situation to address it. And the central bank will have that money to distribute to the banking system. And the central bank itself will ensure that it regulates, regulates, regulate. If it have to be a pain in the neck on these banking and on these commercial banks, there are a lot of things that are going on wrong that are adding to all these processes. The central bank must be robust in doing this work. Mr. Coffey, I want to thank you for breaking it down. You know, I, I did a economic 101, I did a accounting 003, but I didn't understand it that well the way you broke it down tonight. So I want to appreciate your time. Thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. Thank cool. you. Thank you to FOL for having me, and thanks to all the listeners, all the people who watch, and people who uh, commented. Thank you. And people are going to watch later on YouTube. Keep your dial here at Focus on Liberia. And thank you to the people who will continue to watch this. Thank you. Thank you. Right. And I want to thank our audience for hanging in there with us. At this time, we're going to be drawing down the curtains tomorrow. Watch our Abba Tupa on the Hour of Politics. Until then, my name is Dennis Jason. Good night and God bless you. We are Liberia.